In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this button animation. I'll go over the entire HTML structure, how I added interactivity with JavaScript, and how I applied all of the styling with CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project that I'm currently working on. In the head tag, I already have a link to a font family that I'm going to use throughout the project, and I already picked out the icon that I'm going to use later on. In the CSS, I declared several root variables, and then I declared some basic styling like setting a box sizing to border box and a margin and padding to zero. In this video, I'm going to show you the full coding tutorial from beginning to end. So to get started, I'm going to jump into the HTML. And in the HTML, first I'm going to create a div with a class of button wrapper. This will essentially hold the entire element. And within this button wrapper, I'm going to have two elements. I want to include the actual button that the user will click, and then I also want to include this check icon that will appear at the end of the animation. So I'm going to take this SVG and I'm going to place it within that div. And for this SVG, I'm going to give it an ID of check. We will use this ID later on in the JavaScript. And then beneath that SVG, I'm going to include the actual button that will be visible on the page. So I'm going to include a button with an ID of button. And for this button, I'm going to include a call to action. So I'm just going to write the word subscribe. So this is actually all of the HTML that we will need for the project and everything else will be completed within JavaScript and within CSS. So you can approach this project in multiple different ways. You can start with the CSS, but today I'm actually going to begin within the JavaScript. So that way we can get the functionality down first and then I can apply all the styling afterwards. So to get started within the JavaScript, first I have to declare some variables for items that I'm referencing in the HTML. So first I'm going to reference the button and the check. I'm going to write let, which is a way to declare a variable, button, and I want this to reference this button that the user will actually tap on. So I'm going to write document.getElementById, and then I'm going to reference this ID. And then for the check, I'm going to follow a very similar procedure. I'm going to create a variable for it and then use the same kind of method. So now in the JavaScript, I have these variables that reference these items in the HTML. And the next thing I want to do is add interactivity to it. So when I actually tap on this button, something happens. So to get started with that, I'm going to add an event listener for that button. When the button is clicked on, I want something to happen. So in here, I'm going to reference that button and I'm going to add an event listener, which basically pays attention to when something happens to this button. And when that button is clicked on, I want something to happen. Well, I want there to be an animation sequence when this button is tapped on. So I'm going to create a function called button animation. Now, right now we are getting an error and that's because I haven't defined what this button animation is yet. So then beneath that, I'm going to write the function for that button animation. So here I'm going to write function and then the name exactly as it appears here, button animation. And then we have to figure out what we want to happen when that button is tapped on. Well, when this button is tapped on, I want there to be a transition in how the button appears. I want it to change shape and color. And so there are multiple ways that you can achieve this, but the way that I'm going to do it is actually within CSS animations. So here I want to start an animation sequence for the button by adding a class to it. So here I'm going to reference that button again, and I'm going to add a class to it. So I'm going to write class list dot add, which basically adds a class to it. And the class I'm going to add is going to be called button animation. Now, again, nothing will happen here when I click on it. And it's because we didn't add that class yet in the CSS. For the check icon, I also want to follow a very similar procedure. So I'm going to reference the check here. I'm going to add a class to it, but I'm going to call it check animation. 
Now in terms of testing this, I also want this animation to repeat over time. So I'm actually going to set a timeout here so that way it defaults back to the initial styling after some period of time. So here I'm going to set a timeout. And for this timeout, I'm going to create a function for it. And so to bring these elements back to the default position, I'm essentially just going to remove the class that I added over here. So I'm going to reference that button and that check and then remove the class that we added. And with that timeout function, you also want to specify a length and time. So now we have a function that basically says, when this button is tapped on, I want to add these certain classes to these elements. They will play for a certain duration. And after six seconds, I want these classes to be removed. So it goes back to its initial state. So I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but you probably wouldn't need this in a real project. So now I'm going to apply a bit of styling within the CSS. So it not only looks a bit better, but it also has those animation sequences. So within that CSS, first I'm going to apply some basic styling for the actual button wrapper. So I'm going to reference that class of button wrapper. And I'm just going to set the position of this to relative so that way the other elements have something to hold on to. Then I'm going to apply styling for this actual button. So again, this has an ID of button. So I'm going to reference that here. I'm going to set the font size to 2 REM and a font weight to bold. I'm going to set the font family to inherit and I'm going to have the text aligned to center. I want the color of the text to actually be white. So I'm going to set that there. And then I'm going to set a padding to REM and then three REM. I'm going to set the outline to none and then set a specific border radius. I'm going to set the border to a particular value and it's because we're going to use this later on in the animation sequence. And then I'm also going to set the background color to that same color. And then I'm also going to add a transition here for the background color and for the border. For this button, I also want to add a slight hover effect. So I'm going to write and hover. And I'm going to modify the background color and the border. So now we can see there is a hover effect, but I want it to look a little bit more interactive. So here I'm also going to add cursor to pointer. Next, I'm going to apply styling for that check. So beneath this, I'm going to reference that ID of check. I'm going to set the width and the height to 4 REM. I'm going to set the fill to a particular color. And I want this check to appear at the end of the animation directly in the center of the button. So here I'm going to set the position of this to absolute so I can have a bit more control of how I want it to be placed. I'm going to set the left and top to 2 REM. And initially, I don't want that check to be visible at all, so I'm going to set the opacity to zero and a Z index to negative one. So that way we can't see the check in the initial state. Then beneath this, I'm going to create these classes that we reference in our JavaScript. So I'm going to create one called button animation and another one called check animation. So here I'm going to create a class called button animation. And I want this to start an actual animation, so I'm going to reference it here, and I'm going to call it animate. This will take place in four seconds with an ease in function, and it will be forwards. Which basically means it will retain that ending state. And then for the check animation, I'm going to follow a very similar procedure. I'm going to create an animation called check animation. And here I'm going to call it animate check and it will follow the same exact protocol. So next we actually have to create these animations. So here I'm going to say at keyframes, animate, and I'm going to set particular values at different instances in time. So at the 0% mark, I want it to appear a certain way, and then I'm going to set different values at different percentages. So initially I want that word subscribe to go away. So I'm going to set the color to transparent so that way we won't see that word subscribe anymore. And I'm going to set the width to a hard value of 16 REM. 
Then at the 5% mark, how do I want this to look? Well, I want to modify the width, so I'm going to set the width to 8 REM. I'm going to set the border radius to 10 REM. And then I want to play with the background color and the border. So I'm going to go back here and copy these values. And initially I declared several accent colors that I wanted to play with. So here I'm going to remove this color and I'm going to write accent 100. And then I'm going to also apply that here as well. Then throughout the animation sequence, I essentially want to play with the background color and the border color. So I'm going to copy this value and I'm going to modify it throughout the animation sequence. So at the 25% mark, I'm going to place these values, but then modify them. At the 55% mark, again, I'm going to do the same thing. At the 75% mark. At 82, I'm going to bring it back to that primary color. And I just had to do a bit of experimentation with these percentages, so it'll just depend on the effect that you're going for. At the 88 mark, I want that background color to be transparent. Because at the end, I only want it to appear as if there's a border and the check. So then at the 100% mark, which will be the ending state, I'm going to keep that border radius of 10 REM. I'm going to keep that color as transparent. Keep that width at 8 REM. I'm going to keep that background color as transparent as well. And I'm just defining exactly how I want it to be at the ending state, so that way it doesn't automatically go back to the initial state. I'm going to keep that border as primary hover. The last thing I'm going to do is create the keyframes for the check. So I'm going to write at keyframes, animate, check. And I only want that check to animate at the end part of the sequence. So I'm actually going to start it at the 90% mark. And I want this to be a display of block. I want to initially have a transform scale of one. And I want that opacity to be zero because I wanted to ease into the animation. At the 95% mark, I'm going to transform the scale of it to 1.3. So that way it has a little bit of a bounce to it. I want the opacity to be at full opacity, so I'm going to modify it to one. And at the 100% mark, I want it to land at its ending state. So I'm going to have the transform scale of one. And I'm going to set the opacity to one. So now let's see what happens. I have this button and I tap on it. It animates throughout the color sequence. And then at the end, the check appears. So there you go. That's how I created this button animation using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.